Hey everyone, Jason here, digital marketing consultant, and in this ultimate content marketing strategy and guide, you're going to learn everything you need to know to put together a content marketing machine, the five simple steps to consistently producing great content that your audience and customers will love. Timestamp table of contents in the description, along with some other helpful videos to actually begin implementing this content marketing machine and plan. So the very first thing we need to talk about before we dive into the five steps is you need to choose a content medium that you're going to focus on because when you try to master everything, you wind up being good at nothing. So you really want to make sure that you focus on one content medium, whether that's blogging, that's audio via podcast, or that's pretty much video via YouTube. These are the three mediums that I highly recommend focusing on. Now, how the heck do you choose? It pretty much just comes down to whether or not you want to be on video because video is here to stay and it's the easiest one as you'll see in the promotions phase to actually syndicate across multiple platforms. If you don't wanna to learn to be good on video because nobody's good at video when they first start, this is a very unnatural thing, just sitting in a room talking in front of a camera that's not really normal. Nobody's comfortable with that. But if you don't wanna become comfortable with that, then podcasting is the next place, best place, best place to start. And if you don't want to talk at all, and you are one of those people who loves writing, then blog posts are the way to go. But definitely don't base the decision on what you think you're good at now, because whatever you're good at now doesn't really matter. It's all about what you want to become good at. So once you choose one of these, the very first step in the content system is research, because you want to make sure that people actually want to engage with the content that you're making. If you already have an audience and you already have a large email list, then you can pretty much make whatever type of content you want because you already have people who want to engage with you. But if you're just getting started, you need to make content that's discoverable, that helps you get discovered and brings in new people to your audience channel and business. And so to do this, we need to create something called your content pillars. And these are going to be three to five pillars of the type of content that you're going to make. Because number one, you want to make sure that you're focused on the type of content you're making so the people understand the type of content that you make. And number two, you want to make sure that you don't wind up talking about the same thing all the time. So there are two questions you want to ask when it comes to your ideal customer or viewer. Now, if you don't already have an ideal customer or viewer, this process is still going to work, but I highly recommend you check out a link in the description to a full video that walks you through how to come up with your ideal customer avatar. Now, there are two questions to ask. Number one, what results are they after? And number two, what roadblocks are getting in their way? So this is going to be a 30 to 60 or 90 minute exercise where you really want to think about your ideal viewer, your ideal reader, your ideal listener, and how can you be helpful to them? What are they struggling with and what are they ultimately trying to achieve? So you want a long, long laundry list. In this particular example, let's just say we're creating a new YouTube channel that's going to be all about how to grow a YouTube channel. Well, the roadblocks they're probably dealing with is not getting enough views, not getting enough subscribers, not ranking videos. Maybe they're concerned about their video quality. And why does all this matter? Because what they want out of their you growing their YouTube channel is maybe to finally quit their day job. They want to make a part-time or full-time income, and they just want to grow their channel so they can spend more time replying to people who actually really like watching their videos. Okay, great. So this is obviously an oversimplification. You want a much longer list than this, but then what you want to do is identify three to five topics that represent pretty much everything you've listed out. And these are going to become your content pillars and your content pillars are going to help you frame the type of content you make and also organize your content calendar. And these pillars are going to apply with whatever type of content medium you are doing. And they can also apply if you're going to be doing multiple content mediums in the future, but definitely start with one. And so once you have your three to five, then what you're going to want to do with whatever medium you're doing is post at least three times a week. So choose which days are going to be which pillars and then choose the days that you're going to focus on your syndication platforms. We'll get to your syndication platforms in step number five, but just know that you want to choose what days of the week are you committing to posting and then what pillar is going to be on that particular day. If you're only posting three days and you have five pillars, well, then you can kind of mix and match which pillars go with which week. But essentially you wanna make sure that you're not doing the same pillar three days in a row. So your content stays focused on the general broad topics that you wanna talk about, but also you don't wind up making the same style of video 
three days in a row. And so this is how you create your content calendar at least three times a week. And you've also chosen your general topics. So once you have this, you're ready to actually start diving in, figuring out what specifically should my blog post be about, my podcast be about, or my YouTube videos be about. And there are a couple of free resources you can use to make sure that you're always choosing keywords and topics that are relevant to your potential audience. So you want to use free tools like SEMrush, BuzzSumo, Answer the Public, and YouTube search suggestions. Even if you're not doing YouTube search suggestions, you're doing a podcast, you can actually use YouTube to generate ideas for your podcast or your blog posts and vice versa. So all of these things are tools that you can go ahead and learn on your own. Link in, in the description to a video that actually walks you through a full suite of free tools you can use for your digital marketing. This is just one small piece of a bunch of tools that can be helpful in your research. But essentially in your research phase, now that you have your content pillars, you've chosen the three days a week that you're gonna post and what type of content, now it's actually time to find what kind, types of keywords should you go after and then what types of topics or or subjects should you be writing and producing content about. Now the next step in the process, you actually want to write out your headlines and your social teaser texts before you actually go into the writing and production process. And the reason you wanna do this is you really wanna make sure that you're not only focused on choosing the right types of keywords and, and topics, but you also want to make sure that you're writing good headlines that are focused on the user before you get all into whatever the topic is gonna to be about. Because something that's really easy to do is choose a keyword or a topic and then write what you think the video should be about or what you think the blog post should be about. And simply writing the headline first based upon your research forces you to make sure that you're always serving the user intent, what other people care about versus what you think is really important. And so this is just a little screenshot of what my content calendar looks like. So we actually write out all of the headlines, we choose the keywords, we write the teaser text, which is going to be that little piece of text that you use to entice people to click on social media, or it's that little preview that shows up before someone clicks on your YouTube video. And we do all of this to make sure that we're always serving the actual user and pulling people in and then we create the content to make sure that it delivers on the promises that are made in the headline and the teaser text. Now, this next part is going to be the most time consuming and that is the production. So now that you've made sure that you're actually going to be making content that people want and it has a high likelihood of helping people discover you, it's time to produce. Now, done is better than perfect with any type of content you're making. You can always remake a video, you can always update a blog post, you can always redo a podcast. Nothing is set in stone when it comes to content, you can always improve. So when we're looking at our content calendar and doing at least three posts a week, irrespective of what medium you're doing, you really wanna make sure that you commit to that output, not necessarily trying to make sure that every single post, every single video or episode is the best it could be. Done is better than perfect. Number of occurrences is so important when it comes to your long-term content marketing strategy. Now, when it comes to podcasting and YouTube, there are a couple of options you have in terms of gear. So I'm briefly going to go over some gear, but remember that done is better than perfect and the gear is not what's going to help make you successful. So at the very basic level, we have a phone and a lav mic. So essentially just Take the current phone you have and you can record YouTube videos off it. One of the first three or 400 videos I did on this channel was with a phone. Not this one, because the phone's dead now, but you don't have to buy an expensive camera to get started. And if you want to podcast, all you need is a recording app and a $40 lav mic and you're good to go. The next step above that, if you're doing video or podcasting, is going with something like the Blue Yeti mic. So the Blue Yeti mic and a $50 Logitech webcam, the C920, I believe, is all you need if you want to take your video or podcasting up a level. I actually recommend recording yourself while you're doing your podcasting so you can have video as well. But if you don't wanna record yourself, that's fine. But this setup right here, less than 200 bucks and you're good to go. Now, if you're going to be doing any vlogging, then you can go ahead and pick up a GoPro and this small mic. This whole setup is about 400 bucks. And if you wanna get really fancy, then you can pick up the Sony Mark II, which winds up being about $900. 
with the whole setup. And what I'm using to record this video right now is the Lumex G85X or, or something. I don't know. They always come up with weird names for these. And that entire setup with the Shure microphone wound up being just under $1,000. Now, whether you're going to spend $1,000, you're going to spend $800, you're going to spend $400, or you're just going to spend $165, all of these options work. None of these are going to make or break your success. So I highly recommend if you don't have the budget for one of these, then you can just start with your cell phone. It's so easy to overcomplicate the process, trying to get the best gear, get the fanciest stuff, when really it's just about the output and number of videos that you're making. So that's all the fun gear that you could play with, but it's really not an not important and it can actually wind up being a distraction. So with your production, if you don't have a lot of time to actually write all your blog posts, write all your scripts, then you can go to a place like Freelancer or Upwork to actually get some freelance help with producing your content. So if you're looking for a writer, you're typically going to pay $200 to $500 for your video script, your blog post, or your audio script for your podcast. And if you want any sort of graphics, you could expect to pay 15 to 50 bucks for your graphics. Now, when it comes to editing, so if you want someone to edit your podcast audio, your video, or someone to proofread your blog post, you're looking at anywhere from 75 to $200. And again, if you want some more graphics, it's probably be 15 to 20 bucks. And of course, if you're on a really tight budget, you don't have to hire someone, but I definitely recommend at least figuring out if you can afford to have an editor with any content medium. Because if you're doing blog posts, you definitely want someone to proofread your stuff. And if you're doing video or audio, you'll be able to output put out more content if you have someone helping with the editing, 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 editing process. Speaking of editing, now the next step in the process, step number four is optimize. So this is where you're actually going to start optimizing your content. And there are two levels to optimizing your content. The first is SEO, which could be a video in and of itself. So link in the description to some videos that walk you through the search engine optimization process for YouTube. And the second part, more importantly, is the call to action. Again, link in the description to a video that walks you through a deeper dive how to do this particular part because optimization is a video in and of itself. And you'll see why I did that in a second. Now, what's really cool with optimizing is you want to make sure that every one out of five or 10 videos or podcasts or blogs link over to something called a landing page where you grow your email list. And essentially you want to grow your email list because this is where you're going to be able to make paid offers. And it's a private channel that you're going to have direct access to your customers and your audience members. So it's very important that you don't gloss over this process, but you don't want every single piece of content you put out saying, Hey, click the link in the description to, you know, get X, Y, Z, or, Oh, thanks for listening to the podcast and subscribe, 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 subscribe to my email list because that's just going to come across as needy. Now, the final part is promotion. And this is one that's often overlooked. But now that you've put all this time and energy into creating some awesome content, it's time to actually get the word out. It's time to tell the world, hey, I have this awesome piece of content. You should come engage with it because I think it's really going to make your life that much better. Now, there are two ways to promote content. There's cross promotion with your content and then there's new promotion. So we'll go through cross promotion. You'll notice that several times throughout this video, I went and said link in the description to XYZ video, whether I was talking about a customer avatar video, I was talking about doing SEO or research or talking about the call to action part of your content, whatever I was talking about, when I didn't have time to go deeper, I went and linked in the description. And this is something you can do with whatever type of content you're putting together, because there's always going to be a deeper dive, or there's going to be a next step or previous step. In the instance of the customer avatar, that's a previous step. In the instance of the call to action, that would be the next step after your content marketing plan. And so essentially, all you need to do is mention other pieces of content you've already made. Now, when you're just getting started, obviously, you're not going to have a bunch of content to reference. But as time goes on, it's going to be easier and easier to link out to other things. Call to action. Again, link in the description to a video that walks you through a deeper dive how to do this particular part. Now, the second part of promotion is, of course, get 
getting the word out and syndicating content. So this diagram right here is going to walk us through everything you could do to syndicate your content. Now, of course you can pause and actually read each one of them. I'm just going to briefly go over this diagram and then go through the costs if you wanted to pay someone to help syndicate your content. Now, when it comes to promoting your content, Pinterest, LinkedIn, and Instagram are pretty much always going to be syndication platforms. So I'm going to focus on those three. With Pinterest, no matter what type of content you're making, you can make three to five optimized images specifically for Pinterest that link back to your original piece of content. When it comes to LinkedIn, you can actually post a quick synopsis or introduction to your podcast, your video, your blog post, and then link over to the full piece of content. You definitely don't wanna put your entire piece of content on LinkedIn. The only exception to that is the YouTube video because you can embed the YouTube video on LinkedIn. And then finally we have Instagram, which is the hardest one to actually syndicate to because you can't actually directly link over to your content, but you can just make a post talking about your most recent piece of content, or you can cut out a podcast or video snippet and upload it as a 60 second post. With your blog post, you could use some of the images from your blog post as a post, but whichever you decide to do, the Instagram post needs to be able to stand on its own. So the primary reason you're putting together the post is you want to grow your Instagram account. If you don't care about Instagram, then just don't worry about syndicating content to Instagram. Now, if you want help with this, here's a quick rundown of how much it might cost for syndicating to these platforms. So if we're looking at Pinterest, it's probably gonna cost you anywhere from 10 to $20 to have a graphic designer create Pinterest pins for each piece of your content. And then LinkedIn, it's probably gonna be 20 to 60 because you're going to be having someone actually do some writing. So you wanna make sure you get a good writer. And for Instagram, depending upon whether or not you're just reusing an image from your video or blog post, or if you're actually cutting out some audio or video, it's gonna be 20 to $40. And WordPress, of course, is going to be the most expensive, upwards of $300, because this is going to be someone taking your transcript from your podcast or video and turning it into an actual full-fledged blog post. So that does it for the five steps of your content machine. Of course, you can take a deeper dive into all of these. Links in the description to some videos and playlists that will help you take a deeper dive into the research, promotion, optimization, and of course, production of your video podcast or blog post. So thank you so much for watching. I sincerely hope you got some value out of this video and you have a good idea of how to put together your own content marketing plan and of course consistently make content. So hit that like button, subscribe for more in-depth marketing tactics and strategies just like the ones covered in this video. And until the next, keep building the business you love.